What shadows and spirits roam these hills and hollers? Many, it said, and many who are the unearthly reminders of misdeeds done. Today, we tell one of those tales. You're listening to Mountain Lore, Tales from Appalachia. Is this one of those spooky tales? It's right, spooky. (laughs) It is so spooky that you're going to be spooked for the rest of the day. Let's put it that way. I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is a ghost story from over in southwest Virginia. Oh, okay. This actually is another one of those that was told to workers from the Works Progress Administration who went around gathering old folk tales from around the country. Hmm. We've done a lot of those, but these are... These are the ones I like the best. Yeah. And it's going to remind you folks of one that we have done before. This, though, is the actual version that was given to the people that were collecting the stories. So this one went around a lot. Then. It it apparently did, yes. Okay. Well, folks, once upon a time, there was a preacher, a man of God who traveled from town to town spreading the good word. He had been taking the word of God to folks in the far southwest corner of Virginia and had saved a good number of souls on his crusade. Now night was coming and he needed to find a place to stay till morning. This particular night, though, was unlike any he'd seen in his travels. See, he was down in Blackwater, not far from the Tennessee line, and there was a driving, freezing rainstorm brewing it up in a place known for its mysteries and whispered tales of haints and boogers. As the preacher journeyed through the storm, he came upon a farmhouse up against a rugged mountain. He knocked on the door, rain dripping from his hat brim, and asked the farmer if he could spend the night there. Well, that farmer, a grizzled man with a kind heart, welcomed the preacher in, but explained that his house was just too small for a guest. Hmm. However, he mentioned an old, empty house nearby abandoned and suspected of being haunted. (laughs) If you ain't afraid of ghosts, the farmer said, you can stay there for the night. Well, the preacher, grateful for any shelter in the storm, accepted the farmer's offer with grace. He sat down to a hearty supper with the farmer's family, enjoying the warmth of the fire and the company of good folks. After supper, the farmer led the preacher to the old house, helping him gather wood for a fire against the chill of the night. That preacher built a roaring fire, its flames casting flickering shadows on the worn walls. He settled into an old chair, Bible in hand, and began to read, finding solace in its familiar words. Hours passed, and as midnight approached, a strange noise shattered the silence. It was like a wheelbarrow loaded with rocks had tumbled against the roof. Mm. Curious, the preacher ventured outside, but There was nothing to be seen except the rain falling in sheets. Oh. Back inside, he picked up the poker and stoked up that fire, trying to dispel that unease creeping into his heart. Mm. But then, a sound like a rooster's crow cut through the night, only to be silenced right quick, just like it had been struck by an unseen force. Mm. Undeterred, the preacher sat down, resumed his reading, but soon... Eerie moans and groans filled the air. It was as though a lost soul was wandering the house, weeping and struggling. The sound seemed to emanate from the very depths of the basement, echoing with sorrow and pain. Fearing the unknown, the preacher put down his Bible and stood up with a stout stick as the footsteps drew nearer. Oh, Slowly, the back door creaked open, revealing a faint apparition, a spectral figure of a woman, about 25. She sobbed and reached out as if seeking help. Summoning his courage, the preacher invoked the name of the Holy Trinity, demanded to know what the spirit sought. The ghostly woman, her form ethereal and haunting, spoke of a tragic tale. I want to be buried proper. My bones are underneath the heart rock. My sweetheart murdered me 
for my money. If you just give me a churchyard burial and, and follow my instructions, justice will be served. With trembling hands, the preacher listened as the ghostly woman revealed her plan. He vowed to fulfill her final wishes and laid her bones to rest in consecrated ground. The next morning, the preacher came to the main house and told the farmer of his experience the night before. The two returned to the old cottage and, well, they found the spirit's earthly remains just where she said they were. Her bones were respectfully removed, then taken to the cemetery and reburied, all but the finger bone of the little finger on her left hand which the preacher put in his pocket, as that haint had instructed him to do. Oh. The following night, a gathering was held, and the preacher shared the tale of the haunted house and the restless spirit's plea. A plate bearing that finger bone was passed around, and when it reached one elderly man in his 70s, he picked it up and looked at it. Suddenly, he realized what it was he got a hold of. For that bone fastened itself securely to the old man's hand like it was glued on. Oh. Try as he might, he couldn't get it off. The truth came out as the man, sobbing and begging for somebody to take that horrible bone off his hand, broke down and confessed to the long-buried crime. His guilt laid bare by the spectral hand of justice. Oh. He met his fate on the gallows, and the preacher bore witness to the power of redemption and retribution. The old house, once shrouded in mystery and fear, became a place of peace, its haunting put to rest by the preacher's compassion and courage. There's more to the tale, though, Oh! for the ghost had one final revelation for the preacher. After justice was served and the haunting laid to rest, the preacher returned to the deserted house as promised. The spirit of the young woman appeared once more, her ghostly form shimmering in the moonlight. I can guide you to where my money is hidden, she whispered, her voice carrying the weight of untold secrets. With her guidance, the preacher unearthed a hidden cache of riches, coins and jewels hidden away by the treacherous hand of greed. True to his calling, the preacher didn't hoard the newfound wealth for himself. Instead, he used it to further God's work, helping those in need, supporting the church, and spreading kindness and generosity throughout the community. The money, once tainted by betrayal and murder, now became a force for good, a beacon of hope for those downtrodden and forgotten. As for the preacher, he carried the memory of that night with him through mysterious, ghostly handprints that haint had left on his coat lapels when she first grabbed him, hmm. a constant reminder of the unseen forces that guide us, the mysteries of the world, and the enduring belief in the triumph of light over darkness. Wow. How about that? Handprints. I wonder if they ever went away. <laughs> Apparently not. I guess he, he just had those handprints there yeah. on his lapel. I guess he didn't wear that coat anymore after that either. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I'd think twice about that. This is a good ending, but uh, if I was him, I'd be afraid that she'd come back again. Well, I guess he figured that she got what she was looking for. Yeah. And now her soul was at ease and, and resting. Now, this story, from what I can gather, came from a uh, farmer from Blackwater who was interviewed by the WPA. Huh. And he said this is a story that's been told over and over from his parents and grandparents and all that for many, many years. So, native Scott County, huh? Well, it's Scott County or Lee County. I'm not sure how far down in Blackwater he was at. Okay. For you, we'll say Scott County. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. <laughs> And folks, that's a tale of ghostly justice and redemption. Another tale from Appalachia. Thanks for listening. If you haven't done so already, go on over to your favorite podcast app and be sure to subscribe to the Mountain Lore Podcast. Till next time, sweet dreams, podcast listeners.